The series begins with the interrogation of a man named Lee Lim, who has been accused of murder. Two police officers are questioning him, and they're surprised by his youthful appearance, despite being 70 years old. Li Lim claims that he hails from a different world and that he possesses a magical flute, which allows him to stay young and travel between worlds. He stole the flute from his half-brother, the king of the Kingdom of Korea. The police officers are intrigued by Li Lim's story and press him for more details. He explains that the magic flute is not only the key to his eternal youth but also holds the power to fulfill his lifelong ambition of ruling both worlds. With the help of the flute, he can cross between worlds and take over everything in his path. Unfortunately for him, the flute was divided into two pieces, and one of them is currently currently in the hands of his nephew. Soon after, the story shifts to the Korean monarchy kingdom, where Lee Lim plots to overthrow his younger brother, the king. With the help of his men, he slaughters the royal guards and kills his own brother. There, Li Lim is not content with just seizing the throne, as he seeks to possess the magic flute, which can only be inherited by the rightful heirs of the royal family. However, Li Gan, the crown prince, witnesses the heinous act and attempts to stop Li Lim. Although Li Lim believes that the young prince is defenseless, Li Gan surprises him by drawing his sword. In his panic, Li Lim accidentally shatters the magic flute into two pieces. He then tries to murder Li Gan, but a mysterious figure intervenes and saves the prince's life. However, Li Lim is now a fugitive and is wanted by the authorities. Despite his elusiveness, he is still alive and hiding in a bamboo forest. One day, he stumbles upon a gate that leads him to a parallel world, where the government operates under a different system than the monarchy. Although time moves at the same pace, the world he finds himself in has adopted a republic system, unlike the kingdom he has known all his life. At that time, Li Lim was initially bewildered in the new world he found himself in until he stumbled upon a man who bore a striking resemblance to him. It dawned on him that he had been reborn in this alternate universe, and the person before him was his incarnation. But when he saw how weak and vulnerable he appeared in this new life, his heart turned cold, and he mercilessly murdered his other self. The story takes us back to the Korean Empire, where a grand ceremony was being held to crown the new king. Li Gan, a young boy who had lost his father in a brutal way at the hands of his own uncle, was forced to bear the heavy burden of ruling the kingdom. Despite his tender age, he was comforted by his father's trusted friend's son, Jo Yong, who became his guardian and personal bodyguard. Meanwhile, in the Republic of Korea, Li Lim was busy studying this new world and quickly gathered his loyal followers, all of whom were individuals from the Korean Empire who had accidentally been transported into this alternate universe with him. As time passed, Li Gan matured into a charming and charismatic man, loved by his people and closely guarded by Jo Yong to prevent a repeat of the tragedy that befell his father. However, despite his many admirable qualities, he had yet to find a girlfriend, causing concern for the palace maid no Og Nam, who had come to regard him as a son. In a bid to find him a suitable partner, Og Nam secretly placed talismans in Li Gan's chambers, hoping to hasten his search for a wife and the prospect of children. But the king remained blissfully unaware, content to bask in the adulation of his subjects and regale young children with tales of adventure and heroism. He was a fair and wise ruler who eschewed special treatment, even participating in a rowing competition without any special privileges or protections. However, during the competition, a sudden gunshot caused Jo Yong, his loyal bodyguard, to spring into action, shielding Li Gan from any potential harm. Although it turned out to be a harmless toy gun, he remained vigilant, urging the king to wear a bulletproof vest for added protection. But Li Gan refused, confident in the presence of his trusted guardian to keep him safe. Shortly after, Li Gan inquired about the progress of finding the person who saved him from his murderous uncle. However, Jo Yong had no leads and believed that the saver may have aged and moved away. This left Li Gan pondering over the identity of his mysterious rescuer, named Zhong Taeul, who was allegedly a girl around the same age as him. The story then shifts to the Republic of Korea, where Taeul, the girl Li Gan was searching for, resides. Taeul is a lieutenant police officer who fearlessly carries out her duties to apprehend criminals. Despite being a woman, she has impressive martial arts skills that intimidate even the toughest of wrongdoers. Back to Li Gan, who was riding his favorite horse. One day, while he was in his stable, he saw something that caught his attention and immediately chased after it. His pursuit led him to a bamboo forest where he stumbled upon a mysterious gate to another world. Li Gan, unable to resist his curiosity, curiosity entered the gate, not realizing the consequences of his actions. At the same time, Taeul was stuck in traffic, feeling frustrated and annoyed. Suddenly, she caught a glimpse of her reflection in the car mirror, and before she knew it, she saw a man on a horse, galloping through the middle of the jam-packed highway. It was an unusual sight, and everyone around him was equally surprised. Then, Taeul decided to chase after the reckless horse rider, who was putting his life and others in danger. At that time, Li Gan was surprised to see Taeul, the savior he had been searching for, in front of him. Without hesitation, he hugged her tightly, but Taeul, confused and unaware of who he was, pushed him away. Soon after, he looked around and realized that he had been transported to another world, explaining why he had never been able to find her. He explained to her that he was a king from a different world and begged her to believe him. 
However, Taeul couldn't believe what she was hearing from Lee Gan. He claimed to be a king from another world, which made her think he was a madman who had escaped from a hospital. Driving a horse on the highway with no identification only confirmed her suspicions. She took him to the police station for questioning, where he kept insisting on his royal status. Her frustration grew as she searched through Lee Gan's belongings. However, when she found his ID card as a king in the Kingdom of Korea, her disbelief turned into pity. She even laughed when she saw the paper money in Lee Gan's wallet, thinking it was fake. Meanwhile, in the Korean Empire, Jo Young was desperately searching for Lee Gan's whereabouts. His disappearance had raised red flags, and Jo Young ordered his subordinates to intensify their efforts in finding him. Back at the police station, Lee Gan found himself in a cell, still claiming his royal identity. His strange behavior only reinforced Taewool's initial assumptions. Suddenly, a man who looked like Jo Young appeared, but it turned out to be Jo Eun Sup, Taewool's friend. He also thought that Lee Gan was mentally unstable and treated him accordingly. Not long after, Taewool got a report saying that Lee Gan's fingerprints were not found in any records. So she went to ask him who he really was. But Lee Gan insisted that he was a king from a different world that she wouldn't understand. At that moment, Taewool thought Lee Gan was just daydreaming and asked for proof of the other world's existence. Then, he explained Albert Einstein's theory of parallel worlds in detail, but it made she even more confused. Since Lee Gan hadn't committed any crimes, Taewool had to let him go. After that, he asked for a five-star hotel's location location to stay temporarily. There, she was surprised that someone like him would want to stay in a fancy hotel. Lee Gan even showed her a button from his clothes, which he claimed was made of rare diamonds. Though Taeul didn't believe him, she took him to a gold shop. The owner confirmed that the button was indeed made of rare diamonds, and she was shocked to see it. Soon after, Taeul came back home and saw Lee Gan's horse in her yard. She was surprised to see the horse there and found out that he had asked his friend to leave the horse at her place for a while. The next day, she went to see Lee Gan and asked why he left his horse in her yard and why he didn't go back to his place. Lee Gan said he promised not to keep the horse there for long, and he was happy to find the person he had been looking for for more than 25 years. However, Taewul didn't believe him and threatened to sell the horse if he didn't go back to his place. The next day, instead of being afraid of her, Lee Gan called her constantly, annoying her. Meanwhile, Lee Lim gained followers by promising to avenge their suffering. After returning home, Taewul called Eun Sup to find out where Lee Gan was. Then, he took her to a library where Lee Gan was charming all the women there. There, she invited him to eat together, but he annoyed her by insisting on having his food tested first. When Taeul asked who usually tested his food, Lee Gan said it was Eun Sup. Since no one else was around to test his food, he thanked her as if he was going to die. However, he was surprised to find the food delicious and unlike anything he had tasted before. Long story short, Lee Gan spent all his money due to his lavish lifestyle and is now penniless. He's forced to stay in Taeul's yard with his horse and hopes that she'll help him out. Taeul is angry with him for his recklessness and tries to avoid him. However, she eventually decides to talk to him and advises him to stop making up stories and go back to his family. But he insists on making Taeul his empress, which frustrates her even more, and she thinks he's out of his mind. There, Taeul got tired of listening to Lee Gan talk, so she asked him to show her the world he believed in. He took her to the bamboo forest where he first used his powers, but the gate he meant did not appear. At that moment, Taeul felt sorry for believing in Lee Gan's craziness. She threatened to turn him over to his parents after the results of his DNA test, but he said he had no parents as they had died. Taeul felt a little sorry for him. Meanwhile, Taeul's police colleague, Kang Shin Jae, was waiting for her outside her house. So actually, he secretly has feelings for her but has never told her. He noticed the symbol on Lee Gan's cane and realized it was similar to the symbol in the case he was investigating. The scene shifts back to the Korean kingdom, where Jo Young recalls Lee Gan's doubts about the autopsy results of Lee Lim's body. Although DNA test results showed it was Lee Lim's body, Lee Gan suspected otherwise. His intuition was right because the body was actually someone else's, who looked like Lee Gan. Lee Lim killed the man to cover his tracks and plot his revenge. One night, Lee Gan feels a sudden pain in his body, and the next day, time stops when he meets Taewol. He takes the opportunity to admire her face before time resumes. She doesn't believe his explanation and leaves. Meanwhile, Lee Lim visits it's a bookstore where the owner is his follower. His men inform him that Lee Gan has left the palace and is in the same world as Lee Lim. On the other hand, Lee Gan was thinking about how time had stopped and went to the bamboo forest. He used a special staff with a piece of a magic flute to open a door to another world. He remembered that his uncle had more pieces of the magic flute and might still be alive in another world. Meanwhile, Taeul and Shin Jae were investigating a murder case. They found out that Lee Lim and his followers wanted to steal people's identities in the Republic world. While they were investigating, some bad guys came and tried to hurt them. They fought back, but they were outnumbered. Suddenly, Lee Gan appeared and helped them fight the bad guys. Taeul was worried about him, but he was good at fighting and scared the bad guys away. Then, she asked how he found her, and he said he used GPS. Not long after, Shin Jae shared ice cream with Taeul, and Lee Gan felt jealous. He said he would go back to his world, but Taeul told him to come back soon. 
When they got to her house, Shin Jae asked about the symbol on Lee Gon's staff, but he said it was just a symbol of his kingdom. This made Shin Jae leave right away because he didn't want to talk about it. Later, Lee Gon was riding his horse in the bamboo forest, and Taeul was feeling lost at her house. She realized that he had left with his horse. Meanwhile, Lee Lim saw time stop again and realized that someone had come from another world like him. At that time, Taeul started to question everything Lee Gon had said before and wondered if it was all just a fantasy. But she still missed him, even though he seemed crazy sometimes. She started to see that some of the things he said were actually true. In a different place, the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Korea, Ku So Ryong, visited the palace to meet with Lee Gon. She suspected that the palace was hiding something about his whereabouts. At first, Ok Nam tried to stop her, saying that Lee Gon was busy, but Prime Minister Ku insisted and went into his room. To her surprise, Lee Gon was already in his room with Jo Young. Ok Nam was shocked because she thought he was not there. He knew the reason for the Prime Minister's visit and warned her not to interfere too much in his personal life. The disappointed Prime Minister left, and Ok Nam immediately cleaned up his clothes because she knew he was tired. Ok Nam discovered items that Lee Gon brought with him from Korea inside his uniform. Meanwhile, Taeul and Shin Jae focused on catching pickpockets in a shopping center to avoid getting too curious about Lee Gon. Shortly after, Lee Gon visited his eldest uncle to ask about any information he may have about Lee Lim, suspecting that he may still be alive. Back at the palace, Lee Gon remembered happy times with Taeul in the library in Korea. Coincidentally, she was also in the same library feeling the same nostalgia. On the way home, her ID card fell into the sewer after being accidentally bumped by a boy. At that time, Lee Gon is lost in thought about Taeul until Jo Young interrupts him with news. Suddenly, time stops again, and he counts the seconds before telling Jo Young about the phenomenon. Jo Young doesn't believe it and is more concerned about Lee Gon's health, calling for a doctor to check on him. At night, Lee Gon can't stop thinking about Taeul and keeps asking his secretary if he has received any calls. This behavior confuses his secretary, who wonders who Lee Gon is waiting for. He also notices his parents acting strange and increases security measures to prevent Lee Gon from leaving secretly. In another place, Taeul is getting a new ID card made. She wants to change the photo to make sure it's different from the one Lee Gon saw. She asks when the card will be ready and the officer says it will take a week. Although the card's release date is different from the one Lee Gon mentioned earlier, she can't stop thinking about her encounters with him. Meanwhile, Lee Gon is talking to his secretary in the rain when he suddenly feels pain in his back after hearing thunder. The secretary and Jo Young become concerned, but Lee Gon doesn't want Ok Nam to know about it. After his secretary leaves, Jo Young questions whether he is really in pain, but Lee Gon confirms that he is indeed in pain. When Jo Young opened up Lee Gon's clothing, he was shocked by what he saw in Lee Gon's body. It was so strange that he immediately went to call the royal doctor. However, while Jo Young was away calling the doctor, Lee Gon saw an opportunity to leave the palace through a window. Meanwhile, Taeul was sitting in his office when he was surprised by the sudden arrival of Shin Jae, who threw his brand new identity card on the table. She was caught off guard because the card was supposed to take a week to make. When Taeul looked at the date on the card, he was shocked to see that it matched the date Lee Gon had mentioned earlier. Shortly after this incident, she received an unexpected phone call from none other than Lee Gon himself. With mixed emotions, Taeul rushed to meet him in the courtyard. During their meeting, Taeul questioned Lee Gon about why he had returned to her world. However, he only gave a vague answer, stating that he came back to pay off a debt and would return to his own world as soon as he could, since he had left the palace without permission. Hearing this, Taeul wanted to confirm the truth about the identity card that Lee Gon had taken from her. She also asked him how he looked on the card, but Lee Gon explained that she had tied her hair, making her unable to argue with him anymore because what he said was true. After Taeul finally believed him, Lee Gon invited her to visit his world, and she agreed to join him. They rode on his favorite horse and passed through the gate to the Korean kingdom where he lived. Upon their arrival, Jo Young and the other royal guards quickly flocked to them, surprised by their sudden appearance. However, Taeul was shocked to see Jo Young and thought he was Unsup. Lee Gon then ordered Jo Young and his subordinates to step back since Taeul was still in shock. He took Taeul to the horse races instead. Jo Young saw the situation and ordered some of his men to delete the CCTV footage of Lee Gon and Taeul's arrival. Taeul was still in disbelief and could not believe that she had entered another world. She was even more amazed when the veterinarian referred to Lee Gon's horse as Miss. Lee Gon teased her, but this provoked Taeul, and she accidentally spoke harshly to him. Then, Jo Young warned her to speak more respectfully to the king. Taeul then asked Jo Young if his gun was a real one. Soon after, Lee Gon ordered Jo Young to hand over the gun to Taeul, but she unexpectedly pointed the gun at him, causing Jo Young to put his body in front of him to protect the king. As they laughed, Lee Gon mentioned that Jo Young wouldn't reflexively protect him if the gun was fake. After she believed him, Lee Gon took her to his palace where they were greeted by Ok Nam who was waiting for them. Ok Nam asked them to put away their belongings and, upon seeing Taeul's police identity card, knew that she was the person Lee Gon had been searching for. Then, she asked Lee Gon to leave so she could talk to Taeul alone. 
There, Taegul was left alone and awed by the grand and luxurious royal palace. Shortly after, Ligon's secretary Myung Soon arrived and brought her a glass of tea. However, she mistook secretary Myung for Na Ri from her own world, who owns a coffee shop near her house, but was surprised to see that it was actually secretary Myung. Shortly after, Taegul had a problem with her cell phone as there was no signal, so she asked Na Ri if she could borrow her cell phone to search for something on the internet. Secretary Myung asked her what she wanted to find, to which she replied innocently that she was looking for information about Lee Gon. Hearing that, Nari was surprised by her statement because it was impolite to mention the king's name directly. Meanwhile, Jo Young still thought that Taeul's presence could endanger Lee Gon's safety. Therefore, he returned to Taeul to check her fingerprints and told her what she had done to Lee Gon. Then, Taeul claimed her innocence and said that she didn't do anything to Lee Gon. Shortly after, he appeared with Taeul's favorite food and drink. Then, she asked Lee Gon if she could borrow his cell phone, but Og Nam arrived and took her to another room. At that time, she was concerned that something might cause trouble in the palace if Taeul was left alone with a foreign woman. At dawn the following day, Lee Gon visited Taeul's room and requested that she accompany him to carry out state activities disguised as a bodyguard. However, Og Nam was already present, which made him feel uneasy as she always seemed to know his plans. Despite this, Taeul went ahead with the plan and disguised herself as a bodyguard to accompany Lee Gon on his state activities. During the event, she was in awe of his authority, charisma, and intelligence as the king of the Korean kingdom. After the event, Jo Young instructed Taeul to tour the palace and observe the state of the cities in the Korean kingdom while Lee Gon was on a plane. Lee Gon later found Taeul's search history on his cell phone amusing but was surprised when she searched for his family tree. Meanwhile, Taeul took advantage of her free time to explore the Korean kingdom by visiting museums and even going to the police station to see if the police officers there recognized her. She also went to her home address in that world in hopes of finding out if her mother was still alive. Unfortunately, no one there recognized the characteristics of the person she was referring referring to. On her way back to the palace, Taeul faced a problem when she ran out of money. She tried to reach out to the royal party using a public phone, but unfortunately, her calls were always ignored. However, Lee Gon overheard the situation and immediately ordered his private pilot to pick her up. It turned out that she was being monitored by Jo Yong, and Lee Gon had previously visited her with a tight escort. But unfortunately, Prime Minister Ku discovered his actions and followed him there. When Lee Gon saw Prime Minister Ku's arrival, his happy expression suddenly faded away. Taeul, who noticed this, pretended to be a foreign tourist who had been friends with him for a long time. Prime Minister Ku, who had feelings for Lee Gon, started to suspect that something was going on between them. After Taeul and Lee Gon boarded the plane, Secretary Mayan realized that Lee Gon had cancelled his remaining activities just to meet Taeul as soon as possible. Upon arriving at the palace, he took Taeul to the kitchen and made her a dish. This incident made her fall even more in love with him. Then, she asked for his identity card because she had come to that world to see it in person. However, Lee Gon claimed that he had let Taeul go home. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Ku, who was still curious about Taeul's whereabouts, ordered her men to cancel all agendas, as she wanted to take some action first. Meanwhile, Jo Young received information that Taeul was a con artist with the real name Luna, who had been on the police's most wanted list for the past few years. This made Jo Young even more suspicious of her, and he submitted her fingerprint sample for investigation. Finally, Lee Gon revealed Taeul's identity card, which he had kept all this time. When she saw the ID card, she realized it was the exact same one she had just received a few days ago, even though the ID card had existed 25 years ago in his world. This baffled Taeul, and she asked how it was possible. Lee Gon explained that during a traumatic incident in his past, someone had saved him and dropped the ID card. Although he didn't remember much about the incident, he believed that his savior would one day come back to him. Then, he begged Taeul to stay by his side, believing that she was the one he had been waiting for all this time. Suddenly, Jo Young arrived to report that Prime Minister Ku had mobilized the National Security Council because the Japanese state had violated the country's borders without permission. There, Lee Gon had to deal with the problem, and the situation was getting critical. He couldn't accompany Taeul and had to part ways with her. It was a heartbreaking moment for him, but he had to give up Taeul and let her return to her world. Following their separation, Lee Gon immediately left for the battlefield while Taeul returned to her world and resumed her duties as a police officer, catching criminals. Despite being apart, they made a promise to meet again after his business was over. Meanwhile, the situation on the battlefield intensified as the Japanese army refused to withdraw from the Korean kingdom's territory, requiring Lee Gon to take considerable time to resolve the conflict and reunite with Taeul. As Taeul began to miss Lee Gon, she found solace in remembering the moment they parted, where he gave her a memento in the form of a bag of flower seeds that she promptly planted. Eager to see him again, she searched for information about him in her world until she heard something surprising. On the other hand, Lee Gon received information about an investigation into Lee Lim's autopsy results conducted by his uncle. The investigation revealed that Lee Lim did not die from drowning, but from a broken bone. However, there were irregularities in the findings, as the body they found had a history of polio, which he had never had. 
Despite this, his fingerprints and blood type match Li Lim's 100%. After leaving Taeul and his world and heading back to the battlefield, Li Gan promised to meet her again once his business was over. As he worked to resolve conflicts on the battlefield, Taeul began to miss him and searched for any information related to him and her world. Eventually, she discovered some shocking news related to Li Gan's investigation into his father's death and shared it with him. Li Gan learned that his uncle had discovered irregularities in the investigation of Li Lim's autopsy results, suggesting that Li Lim may still be alive. This convinced him that he needed to go to the world where Taewoo was and investigate further. When he finally appeared in front of her, she hugged him tightly after not seeing him for so long. In a flashback, it was revealed that Ok Nam had informed Zhang and that Li Li may still be alive and living somewhere, which worried her about Li Gan's safety. Li Gan had hypothesized that Li Lim committed treason by killing his father to gain control of the magic bamboo flute. If he was still alive and had some of the bamboo sticks in his possession, Taewoo's safety would be at risk. At this point in the story, Taewoo's life is in danger because Li Lim has discovered her identity and is planning to harm her. Li Gan, concerned for her safety, wants to travel to her world right away. However, as a king, he has important duties to attend to and cannot simply leave the palace. Therefore, he rearranges his schedule and instructs Prime Minister Ku to attend a ceremony on his behalf. His aim is to reach Taewul as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Taewul is investigating a murder case with her colleague Shin Jae. The suspect is believed to be one of Li Lim's henchmen. Ognam is also concerned about Li Lim's survival and the fact that one of the palace workers has been caught snooping in Taewul's room. There, Ognam suspects that this person is working for Li Lim. However, Li Lim is not only targeting Li Gan and Taewul, but also their loved ones, such as Zhang In and Xin Jie. His henchmen are keeping an eye on Xin Jie, but their motives are unclear. Once Li Gan has completed his state business, he sets out to meet Taewul and her world. However, on his way there, Zhou Yong, his loyal guard, stops him and reveals that the person he thinks is Taewul is actually a fraud named Luna. As the story continues, Li Gan finally realizes that Taewul's doppelganger, Luna, actually exists in his world. In order to prove that Taewul is not Luna, he decides to take Zhou Yong to the other world to show him the differences between the two worlds. At first, Zhou Yong is skeptical, but after seeing the gateway that connects the worlds, he is shocked and convinced that he was telling the truth. Meanwhile, Li Li meets with two powerful individuals from the Korean government. Government. During the meeting, time suddenly stops, indicating that Lee Gan has returned to the Republic of Korea. When time resumes, one of the visitors is surprised to see someone who looks just like him. Soon after, his loyal subordinates quickly eliminate the visitor, revealing Lee Lim's habit of stealing the lives of important people and replacing them with his own subordinates. Back to Lee Gan meeting Taeul, where she shamelessly hugged him tightly upon their meeting. Upon entering the house, she mistook Jo Yong for Eun Sup, but after realizing her mistake, she noticed a different side of Jo Yong. There, Jo Young appeared shocked and agitated, which surprised Lee Gan since he was known for being calm and collected. Soon after, Eun Sup arrived and fainted upon seeing Jo Young, despite their similar faces and vastly different personalities. After explaining the situation to Eun Sup, Taewul requested that they not leave together to avoid arousing suspicion. Then, Lee Gan took the opportunity to spend time with Taewul, starting with a meal and then heading to a shooting game where he was able to impress her with his improved shooting skills. Upon returning home, Taewul revealed that she was investigating news originating from Lee Gan's world. Lee Gan initially found this impossible, but after hearing the news firsthand, he realized that their two worlds had become mixed. At that time, Lee Gan felt that investigating the case related to his world would put Taewul in danger, so he urged her to stay away from it. But when she insisted, he was forced to reveal that Lee Lim, the person who killed his father, was behind the report. He suspected that Lee Lim was using someone else's identity in the Republic of Korea, so he asked Taewul to investigate. Meanwhile, Lee Lim learned that Lee Gan was not in the Korean kingdom, so he decided to go there with his subordinates. Jo Young, who was worried about Lee Gan, asked him to return to their original place. However, he explained that he brought Jo Young to that world to find out if Lee Lim was still alive and living there. Suddenly, time stopped, and Lee Gan quickly wrote something down on a piece of paper paper and put it in Jo Young's pocket. When time resumed, Lee Gan told Jo Young that time stopping might be related to Lee Lim, who could also move between worlds. To prove it, Lee Gan instructed Jo Young to take something from his pocket, which left Jo Young stunned. Lee Gan ordered Jo Young to protect Taeul and, if possible, kill Lee Lim in that world. Meanwhile, Lee Gan would do everything in his power to restrain Lee Lim if he appeared in their world. Shortly after, Lee Gan warns Jo Young to stay alert at all times as Lee Lim's ultimate aim is to obtain the magical flute he possesses. With the flute in his possession, Lee Lim could become the ruler of both worlds. Meanwhile, in the Korean kingdom, Prime Minister Ku learns that the person she met with Lee Gan was actually a conman named Luna who frequently goes to jail. This makes her suspicious as to how Lee Gan, a king, is acquainted with a criminal like Luna. Just as Prime Minister Ku is about to leave to meet Luna, she receives a package containing a newspaper that Lee Lim had read in the Republic of Korea. This suggests that Lee Lim is already in the Korean kingdom and has intentionally sent the newspaper to her. 
On the other hand, Ognam's suspicion about spies in the palace is confirmed when Li Lim is seen holding Taeul's lost identity card. However, he becomes more curious about Taeul and her relationship with Li Gan. Soon after, his subordinates inform him that there is someone in the Korean kingdom who looks exactly like Taeul and goes by the name Luna. Upon hearing this, Li Lim orders his subordinates to locate Luna as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Ku meets Luna and is taken aback by her unruly and ill-mannered behavior, leading her to believe that Luna is not the same person she met with Li Gan. Despite Luna's striking resemblance to Taeul, her personality and actions are drastically different. She doesn't hesitate to harm anyone who gets in her way, leaving Prime Minister Ku feeling uneasy about the situation. Shortly after, Luna receives a call from her mother only to discover that Li Lim has already paid her a visit. While Li Gan was showing Zhou Yong his favorite restaurant, they were suddenly confronted by a group of thugs seeking revenge on Li Gan for a past altercation. Worried for Zhou Yong's safety, Li Gan is surprised to find that his companion was actually Eun Sup who immediately abandons him to fend for himself. Alone and outnumbered, he must face the gang of thugs. Thankfully, Zhou Yong soon arrives and scares off the gang with his martial arts skills. A police officer who happened to be Eun Sup's boss realizes that Eun Sup is a cowardly person. When Zhou Yong meets Eun Sup's boss, he pretends to be Eun Sup, which makes Li Gan suspicious of his sudden change in demeanor. While walking, Zhou Yong is mistaken for Eun Sup by a woman named Nari, who is fond of Eun Sup. Unaware of the situation, he tries to act cool but ends up getting hit by Nari, who tells him not to pretend to be someone he's not. As Zhou Yong pondered about Eun Sup's charm with women, he decided to ask him about a woman named Nari. Eun Sup revealed that Nari was someone he had admired for a long time but never received any affection in return. He realized that Eun Sup was someone who often got rejected by women. The following day, Li Gan and Zhou Yong visited his favorite restaurant. Upon seeing Zhou Yong, the owner of the restaurant became shocked, which made him suspicious. He asked Zhou Yong to capture the owner, who turned out to be a subordinate of Li Lim, and had previously committed a betrayal. Despite being loyal to Li Lim, the owner refused to give any information. There, Li Gan couldn't find anything useful from the man's cell phone. Meanwhile, Taeul succeeded in capturing the suspect of a murder case and put them in prison. However, Li Lim's supporters could easily enter the prison to retrieve the suspect's cell phone to avoid any trouble that could harm their leader. Despite being afraid, Zhang Yongji, the murder suspect, refused to reveal where her cell phone was because she knew that Li Lim's followers would harm her. At that time, Taeul was also searching for the phone, which she believed was a vital piece of evidence that could solve the case. Meanwhile, Li Gan went to Nari to pay her rent with gold, and Taeul arrived to share information about Li Lim's identity in their world. Sadly, she revealed that the Li Lim lookalike in their world had been killed by Li Lim. In another part of the series, Shin Jae began to recall a fragment of his past life where he witnessed Li Gan's coronation ceremony as king. However, he couldn't remember how he had ended up there. While at the police station, he stumbled upon Eun Sup's cell phone, which had a picture of Li Gan and Zhou Yong. Mistakenly thinking that Zhou Yong was Eun Sup, Shin Jae asked about his connection with Li Gan and his whereabouts. Upon seeing Shin Jae's serious expression, Eun Sup became frightened and revealed Li Gan's whereabouts. Soon after, Shin Jae was inside Li Gan's room, searching for something. However, Zhou Yong discovered his presence, leading to a scuffle between them. When the curtains opened, Shin Jae was surprised to see two Eun Sups. Not long after, Li Gan arrived and demanded an explanation for the commotion. Shortly after, Zhou Yong informed him that Shin Jae had been caught searching his room. Then, he questioned Shin Jae's motives, to which Shin Jae emotionally asked who he really was, curious as to how he could appear in his memories. Though Li Gan admitted that he had previously told Shin Jae that he was a king from a different world, Shin Jae remained skeptical. Suddenly, Shin Jae recalled Li Gan's name, prompting Li Gan to inquire whether Taeul had revealed it to him. As the only person who knew his real name was Taeul, Li Gan realized that Shin Jae must have been from his world. Then, he urged Shin Jae to share everything he remembered, but Shin Jae decided to leave immediately, feeling overwhelmed by the situation. In reality, Shin Jae is not from the same world as everyone else, as his parents abandoned him from another world. Feeling overwhelmed, he goes to Taeul seeking answers about the other world, but hopes that she won't believe him. However, she has seen the other world herself and cannot deny its existence. At that time, Shin Jae becomes frustrated and leaves her. On his way home, Shin Jae remembers a visit from Li Lim to him and his mother, but he still doesn't know who Li Lim really is. The next day, Taeul's colleagues celebrate Eun Sup's graduation from military service, but she worries about Shin Jae's absence. When she tries to contact him, time suddenly stops, and Li Gan realizes that Li Lim has returned to Korea. Not long after, Li Lim receives a report from his subordinates that a police officer is investigating his identity at a nursing home, and one of his subordinates has been caught by the police while another has disappeared. Then, he orders his subordinates to solve the problems immediately. Meanwhile, at night, Li Gan waits for a call from Li Lim's phone, which he had previously obtained. He recalls Li Lim's words from before the betrayal incident occurred. Then, when one of Li Lim's subordinates received a phone call, Li Gan promptly answered and claimed that he already knew about Li Lim's past actions. 
he warned Li Lim to be prepared because he would be found no matter where he goes. He vowed to avenge all the atrocities that Li Lim had committed. Meanwhile, in the Kingdom of Korea, Prime Minister Ku was seen visiting someone and requesting that person to investigate the people who had betrayed the royal family. Her aim was to conquer Li Gan and become the Empress of Korea, which had been her lifelong dream since she was born into a poor family. Moving to the Republic of Korea, Taeul waited for Li Gan near a river where couples usually spent time together. Soon after, Li Gan arrived and put warm clothes on her. They spent the night enjoying romantic moments, but she suddenly became sad because she knew that Lee Gan would soon return to his world. Suddenly, she handed him a document that might be useful. When he saw the document, he remembered one of the palace horse care workers whom he had met before. Soon after, Lee Gan told Taeul that Lee Lim had returned to Korea, so he ordered Jo Yeon to stay and protect her. To ease his mind, Lee Gan decided to bring Eun-sup up to his world. He believed that Jo Yeon was capable of protecting Taeul and making Lee Lim powerless. Besides that, Lee Gan tightened security at the gate to prevent Lee Lim and his crew from entering and leaving through the dimensional gate. There, Taeul had no choice but to follow his instructions and hugged him goodbye. Meanwhile, Ognam already knew that Lee Gan would arrive that night, so she ordered palace officials to escort him. At the same time, Lee Lim also arrived in Lee Gan's world with Eun Sup and his henchmen, whom he had managed to capture. Then, he ordered the palace officials to imprison Lee Lim's men in the lowest prison. There, Ognam looked annoyed, and Lee Han realized it was because he always made her worry. Then, he tried to apologize and make her smile again. Shortly after, Prime Minister Ku came to present the state report. However, Jo Yong's behavior made her feel uneasy, which Lee Gan had expected. During the meal, Eun Sup's silly behavior became apparent again. Unbeknownst to Lee Gan, he had brought packaged kimchi from the Republic of Korea, which only heightened Prime Minister Ku S suspicions of them. A similar situation occurred in Taeul's world, where Nari was surprised by Eun Sup's different attitude. Thankfully, Taeul was able to convince her that it was Eun Sup due to various reasons she gave. Meanwhile, Lee Gan felt frustrated because he forgot to ask Jo Yong for his laptop password. He needed the video recording on the laptop, but didn't know how to access it. Luckily, Eun Sup was able to easily find the password, which surprised him. As soon as they accessed the laptop, Lee Gan opened the video recording while Taeul was present, which somewhat eased the longing he felt for her. However, he noticed something strange in the recording that Taeul was seen walking past a child playing with a yo-yo, and the year on the video was 2022. He was perplexed since he had never seen Taeul wear the outfit she had on in the video and felt that something was amiss. The next scene shifts to when Lee Lim receiving a report from his subordinates about the ongoing police search for Taeul and Shin Jae's identities. This infuriated him, and he immediately ordered his men to eliminate those who had been caught. Meanwhile, Lee Gan instructed the palace guards to find information about the bookstore captured in the videotape. However, they hit a dead end as the bodyguard's search in that world did not yield any bookstores matching his description. There, he kept pondering whether he was missing something until he noticed something impossible which was Lee Lim still had a youthful face and hadn't aged a bit. Lee Gan was perplexed and questioned how Lee Lim could stay young like that. To find answers, Lee Gan traveled to the dimension between worlds to explore and take a moment to himself. Surprisingly, Taeul was waiting for him in the bamboo forest, and they were able to release their longing for each other. However, Lee Gan needed to return to his own world quickly because he had something important to prove about his theory during the New Year's celebration. After delivering his State of the Union speech, he and Eun Sup went to the police station to gather information about Luna and Lee Lim's followers who had been caught. The police revealed that Luna was ill and close to death, so they couldn't imprison her despite her criminal activities. They also shared information about Lee Lim's followers, one of whom had taken his own life after being caught by the police. Lee Gan realized that Lee Lim and his followers had been stealing the identities and lives of people who looked like them. As Lee Gan was thinking about this, time stopped once again and he prepared to face Lee Lim who had arrived in the world of Korean royalty. Soon after, Lee Gan rushed to the bamboo forest, the gateway between the two worlds, but the palace guard said that no one had come through. Then, he realized that Lee Lim and his followers may have used a different gate and ordered his bodyguards to follow him. Finally, in the middle of town, he confronted Lee Lim face to face. During a confrontation with Lee Lim and his troops, one of Lee Lim's men attempted to shoot Lee Gan, but luckily Eun Sup sacrificed himself and took the bullet instead, protecting him from harm. Seeing this, Lee Lim and his followers fled without putting up a fight. On the other hand, Lee Gan, noticing that Eun Sup and some of the residents were injured, ordered his palace guards to prioritize their safety and rushed them to the hospital. Not long after, the news of the incident quickly spread throughout the Korean kingdom, and Prime Minister Ku became curious curious about what had happened. She had received news from her mother that the traitor Lee Lim was still alive and did not appear to be aging. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Lee Gan accompanied Eun Sup and was relieved to find out that he was not seriously injured as he had been wearing a bulletproof vest. 
Then, Li Gan asked why he had risked his life to protect him, and Eun Sup replied that he was now Li Gan's trusted bodyguard, replacing Zhou Yong who had previously held the position. Hearing that, he was grateful to Eun Sup for protecting him. In the meantime, Li Lim ordered his trusted subordinates to prepare for a bloody battle with his nephew. In the Republic of Korea, Zhou Yong coincidentally met Shin Jae's mother and realized that there was someone in the Korean royal court who looked just like her. Back in the palace, Og Nam visited Li Gan, expressing her concern for what had happened. Then, he confided in her about meeting Li Lim, who appeared to have not aged at all, and asked for her prayers so that he could defeat Li Lim as soon as possible. Soon after, Prime Minister Ku contacted Li Gan to inquire about what happened to him at the, the celebration. Then, Li Gan reminded her that she should not interfere in royal affairs and instead focus on keeping the people safe. Hearing that, made her angry with him. To prevent confusion among the public about the shooting incident, Li Gan instructed his assistant to issue a statement. He then visited his eldest uncle and asked him to stay in the palace while he went after Li Lim. He also warned Zhang and to be careful, as he believed that Li Li might not only target him but also his uncle. In the Republic of Korea, Shin Jae took Taeul to a cemetery where he shared the possibility that he came from the Korean kingdom. At first, she thought he was joking, but as Shin Jae explained his past, she couldn't help but cry hearing his tragic story. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Ku, still curious about Lee Gan's incident, asked her friend to hack into the palace's security system and obtain CCTV footage of the incident. Meanwhile, Zhang An was preparing to leave for the palace when he was startled to find Lee Lim already in his room. He yelled for his bodyguards to come, but they were all dead, killed by Li Lim. Without mercy, Li Lim strangled him death. When Li Gan heard the news, he regretted not being able to protect his uncle. At that time, Taeul had been worried about Li Gan and finally saw him in front of his house. Excited to see him, she ran over to him, but it turned out to be a daydream, leaving her in tears. Back in the Korean kingdom, Li Lim had captured Luna. She asked him why he had kidnapped her since she was just a con artist with no money or family. Then, he showed her Taeul's identity card and offered to give her a better life and cure her illness if she would do what he asked. Tempted by the offer, she accepted and gave all her belongings belongings to a boy. Meanwhile, Li Gan was still grieving his uncle's death when he received a report that something was found inside Zhang An's body. When he saw the object, he realized that Li Lim was responsible for his uncle's murder. There, Li Gan was furious when time suddenly stopped and decided to leave the palace, but he soon discovered that Prime Minister Ku was behind the media's reports about his secret departures. Then, he tried to contact her, but she couldn't be reached. Therefore, he cancelled his plans to leave the palace to deal with the issue. Meanwhile, Shin Jae realized that he was being followed and confronted the person, leading to a fight between them. Although he managed to defeat Li Lim's men with his police officer skills, they managed to escape in a car. At the same time, Taeul encountered a woman who looked exactly like Prime Minister Ku and decided to follow her. However, the woman claimed to be a citizen of the Republic of Korea, which left Taeul confused about her true identity. Luna, who had arrived in the Republic of Korea, observed Taeul and decided to change her appearance to look like her. Later that night, Taeul drank something from a glass and lost consciousness after practicing Taekwondo. On the other hand, Nari was approached by a woman who looked like Prime Minister Ku. Jo Young showed up and was taken aback by her appearance. Meanwhile, Li Gan discovered the location of Li Lim's base in a Korean Kingdom bookstore and became infuriated. He launched an attack on the site, determined to wipe out all of Li Lim's men, including his loyal followers. However, it turned out that the person he had just killed was not Li Lim's trusted confidant, but rather someone who resembled him. At the same time, Taeul was taken captive by Li Lim and imprisoned in an empty warehouse. Fortunately, a mysterious boy suddenly appeared and aided her in escaping. Although Li Lim's men tried to stop them, Taeul's fighting skills allowed her to easily defeat them. Strangely, when Taeul turned to thank the boy, he had vanished without a trace. When Li Lim discovered that Taeul had escaped, he became infuriated and cruelly executed the men who had let her go. He then ordered all of his subordinates to capture her, dead or alive. Meanwhile, Taeul, realizing that she was in the Korean kingdom, attempted to make her way to the palace. However, her journey was interrupted when the car she was traveling in ran out of fuel on the way. To make matters worse, some of Li Lim's men appeared and surrounded her. Thankfully, Taeul had a small amount of ammunition left and was able to use it to shoot out the tires of the car belonging to Li Lim's men, causing it to crash. Exhausted and afraid, she desperately called the palace number in the hopes that Li Gan would hear her plea for help. While she was making the call from a telephone box, another car suddenly attempted to ram into her, it was yet another of Li Lim's men. Luckily, Taeul was fortunate enough to evade and immobilize the driver, even when Li Lim's other men surrounded her from all sides. Fortunately, Li Gan had already sent all of his troops to rescue her. Li Gan himself galloped on his favorite horse to save her. 
he instructed his troops to safeguard Taeul since she was the potential future queen. Meanwhile, Jo Young suspected that the lady who went to Na Ri's place was none other than Prime Minister Ku. Therefore, he chased after her and managed to halt her car. But before they could inquire, another car arrived and injected an anesthetic into Jo Young's neck, causing him to pass out. As a result, the lady was able to escape. Luckily, Shin Jae arrived to save him after dealing with Lee Lim's men. The scene shifts back to the Korean kingdom, Lee Gan felt sad and remorseful. He immediately approached Taeul, who was frightened, and took her to the palace. Upon reaching the palace, he directed the best doctor in the kingdom to check her health and prayed that nothing serious happened to her. He felt guilty for involving her in his fight with Lee Lim. Shortly after, Ok Nam advised him to keep Taeul company during her recovery. Not long after, when she woke up, Taeul tried to explain the sequence of events, but Lee Gan told her to rest and recover before telling him anything. Interestingly, his heroic rescue of Taeul became the talk of the town, with the media praising their king for saving his potential future queen. In the Republic of Korea, Luna pretended to be Taeul and studied her habits, convinced that she had died at Lee Lim's hands. When Taeul woke up, she asked her secretary about Lee Gan's whereabouts. To her surprise, Taeul saw the king himself cooking for her. She felt embarrassed in front of the palace servants but thanked Lee Gan for his kind gesture. She even teased him and asked if he wouldn't be afraid if he was serving Luna instead of her. However, Lee Gan confidently replied that he would recognize his girlfriend's habits and know who the real Taeul was. Lee Gan then ordered the palace maids to bring all the best dresses for Taeul to choose from, but she preferred her usual simple clothes. When she found a box containing an expensive necklace, Lee Gan said he already knew she would choose that dress. Curious, Taeul asked how the jewelry box ended up in the chosen clothes. Lee Gan arrogantly boasted that in his world, he could find out anything and had even instructed the maids to put jewelry boxes in all the clothes beforehand. Upon arrival at the hospital, Eun Sup was thrilled to see Taeul after such a long time. He boasted that he saved Lee Gan with a bit of arrogance. Soon after, Taeul and Lee Gan went to the location where she was kidnapped. There, Lee Gan revealed that Lee Lim's plan was to use her as leverage to trade for pieces of the magic flute. Hearing that, Taeul felt disheartened, thinking that she was just a weakness for Lee Gan, but Lee Gan comforted her by saying that he would do anything for her. Later in the evening, Lee Gan took Taeul to a church that witnessed his parents' wedding. He asked a priest to capture their moment together, but time suddenly stopped once again, and Lee Gan wept, realizing that he might not see her again. Meanwhile, at the palace, Lee Gan felt a burning sensation on his shoulder when he heard thunder. Taeul was shocked to see a burn mark on his shoulder and asked how it could have happened. He explained that it might be because he broke the rules by traveling between worlds. Curiously, Taeul unbuttoned his shirt to see if he had a similar mark, but Lee Gan turned his head away, taken aback by her sudden action. At the same time, Shin Jae goes to meet Lee Lim, but he doesn't recognize him and ignores him. It turned out that Lee Lim has burn marks on his face like Lee Gan, but he doesn't feel pain. When Lee Lim gets home, he's eating with a woman when suddenly, someone throws a flower pot at them. There, he is surprised, but he doesn't hurt the woman because she looks like Lee Gan's mother. Later on, he plans to use the woman to defeat Lee Gan. Meanwhile, in the Korean kingdom, Prime Minister Ku has failed to become a candidate for Empress. Her relatives visit her and she tells them about her failure. When she hears that Lee Gan already has a candidate for Empress, she goes to the palace to talk to him about it. There, Lee Gan tells Prime Minister Ku that Taeul is his future consort, but she thinks she's a fraud and opposes the decision. He tells her not to interfere. Suddenly, there's a loud thunder and she has burn marks like Lee Gan, which proves that Taeul met the real prime minister before. At the same time, Ok Nam tells Taeul that she's actually from the same world as her and can be in the Korean kingdom because Lee Gan's grandfather brought her there long ago. Knowing that, Taeul is surprised. Later, when Taeul is going to meet Lee Gan, she runs into Prime Minister Ku and tells him that she's sure she met her in her own world. At first, Prime Minister Ku tries to avoid the conversation, but eventually admits that she's the person she met. Then, Taeul rushes to tell Lee Gan, who understands that Prime Minister Ku has chosen to side with Lee Lim. Meanwhile, Unsup is sleeping in the hospital when someone tries to harm him. However, his comical behavior allows him to avoid danger and even get the attackers arrested by Lee Gan's bodyguards. As the thunder rumbles again, Lee Gan feels the pain and wonders why it only affects certain people, especially after learning that Unsup doesn't feel it. The scene changes to Prime Minister Ku, who has made a deal with Lee Lim to keep him young. The following day, Lee Gan received a visit from Ok Nam, who told him that she had caught the person who stole Taeul's identity card. There, she presented a photo as evidence, which Lee Gan recognized as the woman who had snuck into the palace who was Shin Jae's mother. He was sure that Lee Lim had used her to spy on him. He immediately met with her and she begged him not to involve her son, Shin Jae. Meanwhile, Luna had arrived in the Republic of Korea and went to Taeul's house, where she met Taeul's father. There, she felt envious of Taeul's happy life with her father. Meanwhile, the woman who had hit Lee Lim was seen meeting with Shin Jae's mother. There, Jo Young noticed that she was being watched by Lee Lim's men. When they were in an elevator, he tried to help her. The scene shifted back to Lee Gan, who was worried about Taeul. 
he discovered that she was investigating the location of the two-dimensional gate that Li Lim used. Then, she suggested that they guard the gate to prevent Li Lim from escaping. However, Li Gan explained that time stopped when passing through the gate, and if he put guards there, they would be helpless against Li Lim, who could easily eliminate them while time was stopped. Following that, Li Gan accompanied Taeul and Eun Sup back to their world. Taeul continued her tradition of planting flower seeds in the dimension between the two worlds, despite them never growing. She held on to the hope that they would one day blossom. Upon their arrival in the Republic of Korea, Taeul rushed to hug her father, who was confused by her sudden display of affection. He asked why she was hugging him, especially after their recent separation. At that time, she quickly realized that Luna had already arrived and was pretending to be her. She borrowed her father's phone to track Luna's phone. Meanwhile, Luna met with Shin Jae and kissed him, making him happy because he had feelings for Taeul. However, their happiness was short-lived because Taeul arrived and revealed that Luna was not who she claimed to be. Taeul repeatedly called Luna's phone until she finally answered. Taeul warned her not to harm her loved ones using her identity. Then, she admitted that she intended to hurt Taeul's acquaintances and hung up. There, Taeul realized that Luna was targeting her. The story continues with Lee Gan visiting Jo Yeon to gather important information about Prime Minister Ku. That time, he had already anticipated her actions and had released her from her post because he had ordered people to hack into important royal information. Because of that, her reputation is tarnished in the eyes of the public for her actions. Later, Lee Gan rewards Eun Sup for his loyalty and hard work in the kingdom by giving him a luxury sports car. Hearing that, he is overjoyed with the gift and hopes that it will help him impress Nari. Meanwhile, Taeul is getting ready for work when she is surprised by Lee Gan's unexpected arrival at the dinner table with her father. Her father is confused about who he is, but Taeul introduces him as her boyfriend. There, Lee Gan feels awkward but doesn't object. Later, Taeul asks for Shin Jae's help to find someone who looks like Prime Minister Ku in her world. They go to the address of the woman they are looking for but can't find her. On another note, Taeul realizes that Luna is pretending to be her and using her identity to harm her loved ones. Then, Taeul confronts her on the phone and tells her to stop her evil plans. However, Luna hangs up on her, leaving Taeul to worry about her safety. At the same time, Shin Jae finds out that he's being followed by someone who used to work at the nursing home where many people disappeared. He thinks this person might be with Lee Lim's men, so he and Taeul rush to investigate. When they arrive, the officers there panic, and they discover a dead woman who looks like Prime Minister Ku. Meanwhile, Luna pretends to be Taeul and visits Lee Gan to steal the magic flute piece, but he realizes it's not Taeul. He remembers a past incident when someone saved him and realizes it was himself. However, Luna tricks Lee Gan by giving him a drink that makes him unconscious, and she tries to steal the magic flute piece. Soon after, Jo Young arrives and finds Lee Gan lying on the floor, while Luna escapes but they are unable to find her. As his personal bodyguard, Jo Young made sure that Lee Gan's safety was his top priority. However, Lee Gan had a different plan in mind. He ordered Jo Young to secure the magic flute instead of saving him, as he believed that if Lee Lim got hold of the flute, their fight would be futile. Upon hearing this, Jo Young immediately contacted Taeul to inform her about Lee Gan's condition. Hearing that, she panicked and quickly called her friend, who was a doctor at the police, to help him. Soon after, Lee Gan was rushed to the hospital, and Taeul followed closely behind, filled with fear and anxiety. Sadly, Jo Young didn't allow Taeul to enter Lee Gan's room because he couldn't differentiate between her and Luna, and he didn't want to take any risks. At that time, she had to sit in the corridor, crying and worrying about Lee Gan's condition. Meanwhile, Taeul contacted Eun Sup and asked him to bring his younger siblings to their father's house so they could stay together and prevent anything bad from happening. If he saw Taeul there, he had to make sure it was Jo Young by calling his phone first. Soon after, he immediately followed Taeul's instructions. The scene then shifted to Lee Lim, who was running through a bamboo forest. He had just found out that the mysterious person who had foiled his plans was none other than Lee Gan himself. He was curious about how Lee Gan had managed to do it. When Lee Gan regained consciousness, he asked Jo Young about Taeul's condition. Jo Young explained that he didn't allow Taeul to come in because he wanted to avoid any further trouble, and he urged Lee Gan to return to the Korean kingdom as soon as possible because his safety was paramount. After getting up from his bed, Lee Gan asked Jo Young to apologize to Taeul because he had to leave without saying goodbye. He told Jo Young to stay behind to protect her while he went far into the past. There, he had realized that he had saved himself, and he needed to go back to the day of the betrayal. However, Jo Young didn't fully understand Lee Gan's plan, but he trusted him completely. Meanwhile, Lee Lim was doing the same thing, going through the gate to another world. Suddenly, a mysterious boy told a woman that if the magic flute was in another dimension at the same time, time and space would bring the owner of the flute to the moment they wanted to save. This turned out to be true, as Lee Lim found himself before the betrayal occurred. He introduced himself as a person from the future and warned his past self to eliminate the crown prince, Lee Gan, because he would ruin their plans in the future. However, the young version of Lee Lim didn't believe him, thinking that an eight-year-old child couldn't do such a thing. 
Then, he tried to convince his past self, but his past self suddenly grabbed the sword he had brought from the future and killed him, unable to believe that he was speaking to his future self. Once again, the enigmatic boy declared that Lee Gan would fulfill his destiny to save himself in the past. However, it seemed unlikely that Lee Gan would be able to return to his own time, since the power of the magical half-flute could not bring him back. As foretold by the boy, Lee Gan managed to render Lee Lim's subordinates powerless and unexpectedly encountered Og Nam, who mistook him for Lee Lim's accomplice. But Lee Gan explained that he was from the future and the rightful heir to the throne. During his quest, Lee Gan uncovered new information about how Lee Lim and his gang had escaped. He discovered that his eldest uncle's son had secretly aided Lee Lim, which infuriated him. In response, he taught Zhang and Sun a lesson with several shots. Unfortunately, due to the assistance, Lee Gan lost track of Lee Lim. Meanwhile, in the present day, Taeul had just learned that Lee Gan was no longer in their world, which left her deeply concerned for his well-being. As Lee Gan pursued his destiny to save himself, it became clear that the boy's prophecy was correct. He could not return to his own time, despite his efforts to travel back and forth through the dimensional gates. He remained stranded in different years, unable to return because he only had half of the magic flute. According to his calculations, he would have to wait at least four months before he could return to his own time. There, Lee Gan became worried about Taeul and wanted to send her a message to let her know that he was okay and needed time to return to his own time. To do this, he called the police in 1994 and provided them with the birth dates of people he knew, hoping that Taeul in his own time would hear the message. Day after day, Lee Gan struggled with his longing for Taeul and tried to alleviate it by traveling to times when she didn't know him, from when she was a child learning Taekwondo to her teenage years. After some time, Lee Gan's message from the past finally reached Taeul unexpectedly. Her police colleague reported a strange message from the past, and when she heard it, she realized that it was Lee Gan's voice. Then, she recalled a memory from when she was a child of a man who used to visit her and say that he would soon be where she was. This made her wish that Lee Gan was with her at that moment. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Ku remained calm because she believed she could obtain one of the magic flutes currently held by either Lee Lim or Lee Gan. On the other hand, Taewul continued to hope to reunite with Lee Gan soon. She visited the bamboo forest where the dimensional gate was located and recalled a new memory from when she had just graduated high school. At that time, Lee Gan had come to see her, but because she didn't recognize him, she ignored him. These memories filled her with regret for not realizing that Lee Gan was trapped in another dimension and missing her so much. It turned out that, Lee Gan and Zhou Yong had actually met each other before during the royal rowing competition. As the race was ongoing, Lee Gan had given Luna the rabbit suit that she was wearing. It was revealed that he had purposely given her a special card that prevented her from being caught by the police. Unfortunately, Taewul had met Luna for the first time and was immediately stabbed by her without realizing it. Meanwhile, Shin Jae received a call from Lee Lim asking him to visit him if he wanted to know more about his past. However, he was unaware of Lee Lim's intentions and went to meet him alone. It was then that Shin Jae remembered his tragic past, where his mother had asked him to end their lives due to financial difficulties. Lee Lim had intervened and promised to help them in exchange for Shin Jae's services in the Republic of Korea. Now, Lee Lim was asking him to eliminate Lee Gan, and if he refused, his mother would be the next victim. The next day, Lee Lim met with Nari, and Eun Sup, who didn't recognize him at first, was frightened when he realized who Nari was dealing with. At that time, he had come to ask Nari to inform Lee Gan to prepare himself for the anniversary of his mother's death, which would be a night he would never forget. There, Eun Sup was terrified and immediately tried to inform Jo Young about the situation. After Eun Sup witnessed something strange, he wanted to share it with Taeul, but he mistook Luna for her. When Shin Jae came to arrest Luna, Eun Sup realized his mistake and tried to protect her. Later, the real Taeul arrived weak and injured due to Luna's previous actions. Then, she punched Luna and took her to the empty building for interrogation. Shortly after, Jo Young asked Luna who had ordered her to harm Lee Gan, but she didn't answer. Afterward, Taeul ordered Jo Young and Shin Jae out so she could talk privately with Luna. There, Taeul learned that Luna was dying and asked her why she didn't stab her in a vital area. Then, Luna revealed that she didn't want to make Taeul's father sad and wanted affection she had never received. While fixing their hair, time suddenly stopped, and Lee Gan appeared in the present. He went straight to the police station to find Taeul but only saw the calendar, which made him realize he had returned to 2020. He was overjoyed and relieved to have returned to his own time. Shortly after, Taeul was delighted to see him and they hugged tightly. However, since Taeul was injured by Luna's attack, she had to stay in the hospital. At that time, she was scared that Lee Gan would disappear again and refused to let go of his hand. But, he promised not to make her worry anymore and waited for her to fall asleep before contacting Jo Young and Shin Jae to discuss Lee Lim. Shortly after, Shin Jae revealed that he received threats from Lee Lim to kill Lee Gan if he didn't obey his orders. Jo Young also told him that Lee Lim had warned Eun Sup about something he planned to do on the anniversary of Lee Gan's mother's death. That night, they met a woman who Lee Lim had been holding captive. She looked like Lee Gan's mother and emotionally told him that she had lost her child because of his existence. Despite her suffering, she kindly warned Lee Gan to be careful and not to die at Lee 
Lim's hands. It was because Li Lim would use her resemblance to Li Gan's mother to carry out his evil plans. Hearing that, Li Gan agreed with her words. The next day, Li Gan spent as much time as possible with Taeul because he planned to end everything Li Lim had planned. However, this might mean that he would not be able to see her again. Meanwhile, Zhou Yong said goodbye to Eun Sup and his siblings as he prepared to leave. Both of them cried as they felt like brothers to each other. At the same time, Li Gan hesitantly revealed his plan to Taeul, despite her already being aware of his intentions to travel back in time to stop Li Lim from getting his hands on the enchanted flute fragment. However, if he were to succeed in altering the past, Taeul would have no recollection of him whatsoever, and the fates of all those connected to Li Lim would be forever changed. Though the decision weighed heavily on him, Li Gan believed that this was the only feasible solution to put an end to the ongoing chaos caused by the merging of two parallel worlds. Eventually, with great sorrow, they were forced to part ways. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Ku attempted to approach Li Lim, but he knew she was no longer useful and immediately attempted to strangle her neck. However, time suddenly froze, and he realized that Li Gan had returned to the Korean kingdom. After a long absence, Li Gan was finally able to return to the palace and thanked Og Nam for allowing him to leave. Soon after, Li Gan met his uncle's son, who had helped Li Lim escape. Then, he announced that he was exiling his uncle's child from the Korean kingdom for conspiring with Li Lim. He then asked the palace guards to escort Shin Jae's mother to see him. At that emotional moment, Shin Jae asked his mother why she abandoned him in the past. In response, he was forced to tell his mother that he would do the same thing, despite the fact that he had done everything to ensure that Li Lim wouldn't harm her. Later, Shin Jae met with Li Gan and expressed his gratitude for giving him the opportunity to meet his mother. Then, he revealed his goal to Shin Jae to go back in time and eliminate Li Lim together. Although Li Gan had previously had the chance to take out Li Lim, he was too concerned about his own safety and feared that he would never be able to reunite with Taewol. Soon after, when Shin Jae heard Li Gan's plan to change fate, he warned that it could be dangerous and result in Li Gan's demise at the hands of Li Lim. However, he remained determined and requested that Shin Jae keep the plan a secret from Taewol. There, Shin Jae agreed to keep quiet after witnessing his conviction. Meanwhile, Li Lim had a plan in motion but was surprised to find that the hostage he had previously captured had committed suicide. In a state of panic, he called his doctor, but time abruptly stopped, leaving him unable to take action. Fortunately, Li Gan had already anticipated his next move and was able to apprehend him before he could attack with his rifle. Soon after, Zhou Yong quickly paralyzed Li Lim and took him to the gate that connects different worlds, using the magic flute to open a new gate. This gate was the one Li Lim had been searching for, promising perfection and immortality. Despite this, Li Gan was not interested in eternal life and only wanted to travel back in time to prevent his wrongdoings. Shortly after, Zhou Yong and Xin Jie offered to help him, even though they may not be able to return or be remembered by anyone. Before they set off on their mission, Li Gan instructed Shin Jae to take care of something first. During this time, Shin Jae had already taken Li Lim into custody in the Republic of Korea for questioning. When Taeul arrived and asked how they caught Li Lim, Shin Jae remained silent as he did not want to reveal Li Gan's plan. Meanwhile, Li Gan ordered his secretary to announce that his uncle's grandson, who was studying abroad, would succeed him if anything happened to him. However, at that moment, Taeul couldn't shake off the feeling that he was hiding something, so she decided to confront Li Lim alone and ask for the pieces of the magical flute that he had been carrying. There, Li Lim was furious at her question and berated her for wasting an opportunity. But it turned out that Li Lim had another plan up his sleeve to prevent Li Gan's plan from succeeding by making sure that the person appointed to replace him was Li Lim himself, who would eliminate Li Gan. When Li Gan received news of his uncle's grandson's death, he was even more enraged with Li Lim. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Ku, who had heard the news, was in a state of panic as the person who had executed the young man was her relative. In her panic, she contacted her mother to confirm the sentence they had agreed on, but her response was different from what they had negotiated. This realization shocked her, as she had just discovered that the woman she thought was her mother was not her real mother. On the other hand, Taewul meets Luna and sets her free, but asks her to replace her because she is going somewhere and might not come back. There, Taeul already knows Li Gan's plans and wants to take Li Lim to the inter-world dimension to solve everything herself. If she can't change fate, then she plans to find Li Gan later. However, Shin Jae opposes her plan, knowing that Taeul might never be able to return. There, she persists and begs Shin Jae to let her go. Eventually, he gives in and hands her the magic flute piece. Before traveling to the past, Li Gan thanks Ognam for his help. In the past, he crippled his uncle's eldest son, who later helped Li Lim escape from the palace. He orders Zhou Yong to wait outside while he goes in to eliminate Li Lim. But for the first time, Zhou Yong disobeys Li Gan and wants to fight him despite the risk. Meanwhile, Taeul is already in the inter-world dimension with Li Lim and tells him her goal. If Li Gan fails, she will eliminate Li Lim with a weapon. Hearing that, Li Lim laughs, saying weapons have no effect in that dimension as everything will stop with time but she remains confident in her plan. In the meantime, at the royal palace in the past, Li Gan is in hot pursuit of Li Lim while Zhou Yong is tasked with rescuing young Li Gan. 
Just as Li Lim is about to use the magic flu to enter the gate between the two worlds, Li Gan arrives and swiftly eliminates him. Meanwhile, Taeul also attempts to eliminate Li Lim who is in front of her. Although her initial weapon fails to work, she miraculously manages to eliminate him after time returns to its normal flow. The scene then shifts to a mysterious boy who has suddenly grown into an adult. He states that the gates between worlds will now close and only memories will remember him. He questions whether he should make a decision or let things be, as if he were a god who possessed the magic flute. After this incident, the lives of the people known to Li Gan, and everything related to Li Lim, are immediately changed. The woman who has the same face as Li Gan's mother now appears content. When young Xin Jie almost takes his own life with his mother, someone approaches them, but this time it is Li Lim who helps them, not Uncle Li Gan. Luna, who is still a child at that time, also has a different life. Instead of attempting to steal from So Ryong's fish stall, she meets a young So Ryong. Since then, So Ryong and her mother decide to take care of Luna and make her a part of their family. Finally, Taeul is able to go back to her world with all her memories intact, but her life is not the same because Shin Jae is not there. Instead, she meets someone who looks like Li Gan but doesn't remember her. She holds on to hope that Li Gan will come back to her soon. Little did she know, Li Gan has been trying to find her every day but he keeps ending up in a different universe. This goes on for days until he finally finds his way back to Taeul's world. They embrace each other tightly and are reunited. Everyone else in their world is happy as well. Jo Young has a twin sister who is like Eun Sup, and he secretly dates Nari. Shin Jae becomes a police officer and is always with Luna, while Eun Sup becomes a lawyer and officially dates Nari. The story ends with Lee Gan and Taeul going on weekly adventures to different universes together. The moral lesson of this series is that greed for something that is too big can sometimes darken a person's eyes so that that person has the heart to sacrifice innocent people so that his goals can be achieved.